which itself is a beast so much is there on the lymphoid organs to understand because understanding this lymphoid organs of paramount importance especially the lymph node structure to know how the b cells mature and to understand where you get the b cell neoplasms because different area and the of maturation in the lymph node of the b cells will give us to different different neoplasms which have a beautiful diagram later on to be discussed so right now let us assume what are the two types of lymph node organs lymphoid organs one is the primary lymphoid organ second one are the secondary lymphoid organ so what are the primary lymphoid organs the primary lymphoid organs are nothing but the uh, areas where your lymphocytes are formed and matured where the lymphocytes forms and matures maybe b cell or t cell where the lymphocytes form and mature that is where you call the primary lymphoid organs by definition only two areas they form and mature that is the bone marrow and the thymus so these are the two classic primary lymphoid organs if you ask about the secondary lymphoid organ second lymphoid organs are the place where uh, you know like your uh, lymphocytes are activated lymphocytes are actually activated which means this is the places where your lymphocytes are ready for war which means they are going to generate an adaptive response only at these sites these are secondary lymphoid organs so activation happens in secondary lymphoid areas and formation and maturation happens in the primary lymphoid areas by principle the secondary lymphoid organs are multiple so you can classify into three groups secondary lymphoid organs the first group is the simple tissue group second one is the intermediate group and the third one is the organ proper or organus proper that's a latin name so proper organs that form the secondary lymphoid organs simple tissues that give rise to secondary lymphoid organs are number one you have diffuse tissues that is also called as malt that's called mucosa associated lymphoid tissue second one you have solitary tissues solitary lymphoid tissues that are usually seen in the inter i mean intestinal mucosa and third one are the lymphoid aggregates that you generally see in the form of paste patches in the intestine especially in the ileum intermediate typically only one thing is there that are the tonsils which are intermediate between the simple group and the proper organ they do not comprise of the proper organs also they are not simple tissues also so that's why intermediate these are the tonsils you have four groups of tonsils you know the pharyngeal palatine then you have tubal and then uh, you have lingual tonsils this form the valdez ring which got the you know like this forms the adaptive immune response at the entry of nasopharyngeal and nasogastric root i mean uh, oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal root isn't it so this got the entry of the organisms into us so that's why these are called valdez ring you know like first line of i mean adaptive immunity so proper organs wise if you ask me there are only two things one are the one is the lymph node and second one is the spleen so these are the only two areas which contributes the proper secondary lymphoid organs so lymph node and the spleen and to understand more about this primary and secondary lymphoid organs let us see this diagram per se so what you see in this diagram is about the primary lymphoid organs which are major is the bone marrow and the thymus the second lymphoid organ the predominant ones are the lymph node and the spleen you can clearly see the t cells always outnumber even in the bone marrow remember even in the bone marrow the t cells are going to outnumber the b cells because the peripheral blood t cells are more in number compared to the b cells even in the bone marrow the t cells are more in number compared to the b cells i mean t i mean the t cell lineage cells that's what i'm trying to tell even in the bone marrow so primary lymphoid organs so if you see what is going to happen what i'm trying to tell is see leave the bone marrow but in the thymus there are two zones this is what we call the cortex and uh, second one the deeper structure is what we called as the medulla in the cortex you can clearly see from this image they are actually tdt positive the moment you call cortex tdt positive means tdt always means the cortex will contain more primitive cells which means they are immature cells the moment you call it tdt negative means they are more mature cells by analogy the medulla is going to contain more mature t cells compared to the cortex so this is very very important so that's why is given more dark blue green more primitive cells and light blue and green i mean this, this diagram gives rise to more mature cells similarly in the secondary lymphoid organ second lymphoid organ you are going to see mostly mature cells only but i mean anyways but what you can see is like uh, in the pa i mean uh, what what you are seeing is the uh, t cell areas and the b cell areas you can see these are the follicles these are the follicles 
in the follicles you can see typically the b cell zone and similarly in the follicles of the spleen also you are seeing the b cells this is very important which we discussed already in the follicles you are going to see the b cells only in the para follicular area for example if you see in the para follicular area these are the para follicular areas these are the para follicular areas in the para follicular areas and the peri arterial area this is the peri arterial area around the follicle so where you see the t cells in general where you see the t cells in general but what in striking contrast in i mean when compared to the primary lymphoid organs is that you can see uh, you know like the more primitive cells here are actually seen in the center you can see the center contains more primitive cells and the surrounding is containing more mature cells which is the exact reverse of what you saw in the primary lymphoid organs for example in the thymus in the thymus in the center you had more mature cells and in the periphery you had more primitive cells but whereas in the secondary lymphoid organs the center contains more primitive cells whereas the periphery will contain more mature cells so that is how it's going to work so these are some of the differences between um, the primary and the second lymphoid organs remember uh, you know like the t cell areas the b cells are the ones that are going to be constant in the follicles and the t cells will be either in the surrounding the follicles or i mean which is called as para follicular area or peri follicular area in case of the lymph node and peri arterial area in case of a spleen that is where you see the t cells so very easy to understand isn't it so these are the things that you have to understand about the b cells and the t cells now we are we can talk about the primary lymphoid organs i mean important primary lymphoid organ so the most important primary lymphoid organ is the bone marrow we have discussed enough about the bone marrow in the very first video on hematology lot of about things about what is the cellularity you know like uh, the different components of the bone marrow starting you know like what are the areas that contribute how to examine the bone marrow what are the indications contraindications everything we have discussed already in the first video of hematology so i'm not going to discuss anything more the second thing is about the thymus thymus is a very important primary lymphoid organ so which is which is the place where you generate the t cells these are the t cell factories this is where you generate the t cells typically the thymus is located in the superior and anterior mediastinum anterior mediastinum or simply you can call it as retrosternal and pericardial retrosternal and precordial remember that is the reason why since the location is in the anterior mediastinum that is the reason one of the important differential diagnosis for an anterior mediastinal mass is a thymoma very important differential diagnosis so it, it is going thymomas are going to result in anterior mediastinal mass because of the location anatomical location then um, thymus is one of the you know like very active glands in childhood for example if you ask me what happens in child thymus usually is very large whereas in adults they go for involution and they go for something called age dependent atrophy they go for something called thymic involution and they go for something called age dependent atrophy so that's what is going to happen which means in the children this large thymus can be seen very prominently in the chest x ray in the chest x ray is going to give rise to something called a thymic sail sign So it's a very common question in the exam. What do you mean by thymic sail? Thymic sail is something you see in the chest X-ray, a prominent thymus shadow, very common in neonates especially and newborns. Uh, that is what the prominent thymic shadow in the X-ray is. What we refer to as something called a thymic sail, which I'll show you in some time. So these are things. So what are the components? So when you do a histology or a biopsy, what are the things you are going to see in the thymus? So remember. so two things as i already told you you have a thymic cortex and a thymic medulla so thymic cortex is going to contain more of immature lymphocytes immature t cells which i have discussed already whereas the thymic medulla is going to contain more of a mature t cells apart from that apart from this cortex and the medulla immature and mature t cell thymus also contains a whole lot of thymic epithelial cells remember thymic epithelial cells are referred to as tecs these are not thymocytes thymocytes are the thymic lymphocytes these are thymic epithelial cells which also is very important they can have lot of thymic macrophages and they can have dcs also these are important for education of the t cells as well so these are what we call these are the different components that you see in the histology 
and as far as the embryology is concerned where the thymus originates from thymus is said to originate from the third and the fourth pharyngeal arches third and fourth pharyngeal arches so that is where the mnemonic comes from so mnemonic means thymus for third so this is what many books will give you a mnemonic t for t t for that thymus for third so thymus originates from the third pharyngeal arch and remember thymus originates from the endoderm because pharyngeal arches itself are nothing but endodermal pouches only so they actually origin from the endoderm but irony is this t cells that come for education you know like to the thymus originate from the mesoderm that's very important the thymocytes if they ask you where thymocytes this is a very common you know like mistake done in exam if they ask thymocytes where they originate from you have to tell they originate from the mesoderm if they ask you thymic epithelial cells where they originate from you have to tell they are from endoderm from the pharyngeal pouches typically from the third pharyngeal pouch or the third pharyngeal arch very important and very confusing and uh, you know like repeatedly tongue twisting question in exam then sixth one uh, we'll see about the clinical significance applied aspects of the thymus number one where we see thymic hypoplasia thymic hypoplasia or aplasia is very common feature of a d george syndrome d george syndrome and second you can remember as sad severe combined immunodeficiency but very common in exam they will expect this d george syndrome only which you'll see in immunodeficiency video then you have thymic hyperplasia where you see thymic hyperplasia very commonly you see secondary to chemotherapy many chemotherapies can cause thymic hyperplasia and use of steroid drugs steroid therapy all these things can result in thymic hyperplasia very common reasons you will see true hyperplasia this is a pseudo hyperplasia true thymic hyperplasia or true lymphoid hyperplasia of the thymus true lymphoid hyperplasia of the thymus is usually seen in very commonly in autoimmune disorders a lot of autoimmune disorders can cause true lymphoid hyperplasia subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder